it's like day to day torture. It's like you dread waking up in the, in the morning because you know you have to deal with this extreme heat. I'll actually wet my floor down and I'll strip down to nothing but my boxes on. And I'll put my fan right there and blow it right in my face. No matter what we try to do, rags over our head, water on the floor, fans blowing on us, it does absolutely no good at all. It feels like I'm, I'm suffocating. I feel that dread every day that why I've got to go through another day like this. This summer has been the hottest ever recorded in the U.S. Triple digit temperatures have baked Texas and Oklahoma for more than a month. That unrelenting heat has caused nearly two dozen deaths over the past 24 hours alone, and many of the hospitals. Imagine a heat wave, one so scorching it sends the mercury to triple digits for days or even weeks. Now imagine you're stuck in a place with no air conditioning and no escape. This situation could kill you. This year, 11 elderly people suffered this nightmarish death after Hurricane Irma knocked out air conditioning at their Florida nursing home. And every year, deadly heat threatens hundreds of thousands of Americans who are serving time at prisons without air conditioning. With a warming climate and 2.3 million people behind bars, this American nightmare shows no signs of ending. Baked alive at Rikers Island, an inmate found dead in a cell where the temperature had soared. There appears to be a battle heating up about the temperature at the Norfolk City Jail. It's a national issue, but I've come to Texas because I hear it's the epicenter. The U.S. has more prisoners than any country, and Texas has more prisoners than any state. It's also one of the hottest, though most prisons have no air conditioning. According to the official tally, the heat has killed more than 20 inmates since 1998. The actual number could easily be higher. And there are a number of lawsuits against Texas for inhumane conditions and wrongful death. I'm finding out that 2011 was an especially bad year with a record heat wave. When the high was 114 at one prison, the heat index was over 150. That year statewide, the heat killed at least 10 prisoners. One was in for kiting a check, another for DWI, but they suffered an unintended death sentence. Because sentences got longer in the 80s and 90s, there's a group of prisoners whose numbers have been growing and who are especially vulnerable to extreme heat the elderly. I have heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes. That's three conditions that even TDC admits could make a person susceptible to extreme heat conditions. Keith Cole is in year 23 of a life sentence and is now at a prison where a majority of inmates are elderly or infirm. So my heart has to work a whole lot harder than the average guy just to try to cool my body down. And as a result, I suffer from extreme chest pains on days where it's extremely hot. I get sick real fast. Keith tells me he's joined six other inmates in one of a number of lawsuits against Texas for prison's extreme heat, which they see as cruel and unusual punishment. You've got guys on canes, crutches, walkers, you even have guys on wheelchairs. It's like, like being an old folks home. This is a, about life and death. This is about old, sick, handicapped people who are suffering. Stretching back years before the lawsuits against the state, there's a long record of inmate complaints to the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. One inmate wrote about feeling dizzy, disoriented, vomiting, and having chest pains. Another complained of serious heat illness and says he's notified numerous corrections officials. There's one prisoner, Robert Allen Webb, known as Allen, who seemed especially desperate. He complained of being dehydrated, feeling dizzy, having cramps and muscle spasms, and having these symptoms all day long. A year later, Allen complained again of dizziness and chest pain when he was walking down a prison walkway. I managed to track down Allen Webb's older brother, Sidney Webb, who's the longtime fire chief of a Houston suburb. 
When we was young, we was very, very close. We did everything together. We hunted, uh, we fished. We was junior firefighters. Sidney describes his little brother, Alan, as a lover of the great outdoors and someone who would do all he could to help others. But as Alan grew older, it seemed like he was the one who needed help. He started hanging around with different crowds of people that I would not be associated with as far as um, drinking alcohol and the stuff that goes along with it. Do you think he was an alcoholic? I know he was an alcoholic. Uh, I was hoping I would get him straightened out. I did everything I could. Got him to go to AA classes and he was telling me I did not understand what he was going through. Later on, a few years passed, he'd been drinking, and he got in a confrontation with his landlord. He got um, arrested, and he ended up going to Huntsville Prison. He was convicted of robbery. For Sidney, it was the last straw. Comes a time in your life where you can only do so much for your family, and it came a point where I just had to wash my hands with my little brother and um, say no more. Sidney cut off contact, so he didn't know that in prison, his brother was diagnosed with borderline mental disability and prescribed Thorazine, a psychotropic medication with serious side effects. Psychotropics are one of the best known and most dangerous medications in terms of responding to heat. Dr. Susie Vassallo is a nationally recognized expert on heat-related deaths and has served as an expert witness on behalf of the elderly prisoners and other plaintiffs in suits against Texas. The Texas prisons are not air-conditioned, and so that people who are old and sick and on medications and have heart problems cannot stay cool enough in these hot conditions and die because of, because of the heat. Normally, the body cools itself by sweating and dilating blood vessels but a large number of prisoners are on psychotropic or high blood pressure medications that interfere with these processes. When the ability to lose heat to the environment through sweating, as soon as that fails, you're in a life-threatening circumstance. Since inmates know about the side effects, some stop taking their meds in the summer. Maybe that's linked to the fact that when temperatures rise, the number of suicides and fights rise too. Texas says that it gives prisoners access to fans, cold showers, and ice water. But Dr. Vassallo maintains that air conditioning is the only effective remedy. So all the ice and showers and water and fans and saying is not effective. The Texas Department of Correctional Justice knows it's not effective. A fan does not cool the temperature of the air. It only circulates a hot wind, and that can be even worse. We have years and years of medical science that show that fans do not protect people from death due to heat. This was once a forest, but in that 2011 heat wave, a huge firestorm engulfed the trees as well as the nearby town of Bastrop. Massive wildfires have already burned more than a million acres and firefighters are struggling to keep up at this point. Let me go down there and look at it. What's your location? where more than a thousand homes burned to the ground and two people died. And those 11 prisoners who died statewide? The Texas Department of Corrections effectively said, don't worry. The 2011 tragedy was an extremely unusual and unexpected heat event, which is likely not to be repeated. But I checked with the official state climatologist, Texas A&M professor John Nielsen Gammon, who's an expert witness for the state. He says Texas is just getting hotter. Four of the warmest years on record have been in the past decade, and the hottest, 2011, far from being an outlier, is a glimpse into the future. The warmest summer on record for Texas, and Oklahoma for that matter, was 2011. We averaged about five degrees Fahrenheit above normal, and we set a record for a number of days over 100. Would you have an, uh, a sort of an estimate about how many days? About uh, 40 to 70 days above 100. 40 to 70 days above 100, wow. That's right. Do you expect there to be more summers like 2011? Is that the way we're going? Those events should become more likely going forward if emissions continue growing at sort of the, the upper end of what they uh, 
uh, are projected to do, the odds of, of a summer like 2011 is going to gradually keep increasing. That blazing heat of 2011 was becoming unbearable for Alan Webb. He would call his mother often, telling her how bad he felt. Distraught, she begged Sidney to bury the hatchet with his little brother and drive her to the prison for a visit on Mother's Day. So I drove all the way down, just me and my mother, and I saw out in the glass where he was walking out through the um, yard coming our way, and I, I told my mother, I said, that looks like Alan, but he is in bad shape. His pale, his frail, he stumbled a little bit when he was walking. He just just not looked like my brother. I said, ain't they giving you water and stuff here? He said, brother, it's so hot in there. The water's hot. We can't hardly drink it. I said, you're getting out. You're going, we're going to go fishing together. So let's go over prevention, recognition of symptoms, and how to treat anyone who shows signs of heat-related illness. Extreme heat in prisons is so vexing for Texas that the state produced this training video for its corrections officers with instructions on how to deal with it. You and offenders should maintain an intake of at least 16 ounces of water per hour when the temperature gets over 90 degrees. I think we need to really take a serious look in this country on how we run our prisons. After working in the prison, for years and working in law enforcement, I'm always on guard. You're always watching your back. Lance Lowry is a prison guard and the head of the state's Correctional Officers Union. These are third world conditions. We're supposed to run prisons, not concentration camps. These, these are institutions for incarceration. The incarceration is their punishment, not, not cooking them to death. So the people who argue and say Texas prisons are not a resort, so why should we cool them down? Working in law enforcement, I've seen horrendous crimes. I've seen stuff that you have nightmares about. You don't stop having nightmares about. I've had uh, friends that have been murdered. You know, I don't have love for these people. We're not trying to make this uh, lush and uh, we're trying to make it humane. And Lance says that it's not just the prisoners who are suffering. We have been filing grievance over the last two decades on officers falling out, the conditions in the prisons, the lack of availability to, to cool the prisons and uh, have the officers cool themselves. If I ran a nursing home and I went and cut the AC in the middle of August, I would be down in the courthouse under criminal indictment. Lance suspects that the number of deaths of inmates and guards due to heat may be significantly higher than the official numbers. We've had uh, officers die in these facilities. Several weeks ago, we had an officer die at a prison uh, after responding to a fight. It is believed she, she had uh, heart conditions, but this was in the afternoon, in the heat of the afternoon. Prison officer Shauna Tedder was 42. She left behind a daughter and a close-knit extended family. Her autopsy hasn't been released, but some suspect heat was the culprit. We don't know if that's tied in or not. You know, a death might be ruled as a heart attack, but the heat does uh, contribute to, to deaths. The state has paid over half a million dollars in workers' compensation claims to corrections officers for heat-related illness and injury. Air conditioning all the state prisons, on the other hand, would cost millions. Too much, the head of the prison system says, to even contemplate asking the state legislature. But I've learned that prisons in nearby Nevada and Arkansas, the local jails in Texas, and even the detention facility for terror suspects in Guantanamo Bay are all air conditioned. And I've just discovered that the Texas prison system spent $750,000 to air condition the barns where pigs are being raised for its food services. Official policy states that pigs must be kept in a comfortable environment where the temperature does not exceed 85 degrees. But for prisoners like Robert Allen Webb, there was no such relief. Early one morning, 
a few months after Sidney had visited his brother, he received a call from the prison chaplain. He said, Mr. Webb, I'm sorry to inform you that your brother was found naked, uh, stripped down, laying on the floor, trying to get air. He died from massive um, heat stroke. My brother's brain boiled. I could only imagine my brother laying there on the concrete floor, hollering it out for his mother. But to those who didn't know him, Alan Webb was just another prisoner. And even if air conditioning could have saved his life, there isn't much political will for it. It's seen not as a matter of survival, but as making life cushy for convicts. Just listen to this old radio interview I came across with influential state senator John Whitmire, the longtime chair of the Senate Committee on Criminal Justice. It's from the summer of 2011. Senator, I had one caller say that there's been eight inmates that have died because of the heat. Do we have inhumane conditions in our prisons? Let me just point out, the prisons are not built for the comfort of the inmates. Um, they're built to be secure, and we're not going to air condition them. One, we don't want to. Number two, we couldn't afford it if we wanted to. Hi, this is John. I've been trying to get an appointment with Mr. Whitmire, and this is now probably the fifth request. I requested interviews with Senator Whitmire, the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, the governor, lieutenant governor, and state attorney general. Everyone either declined or failed to respond. The Webb family is suing the state over Allen's death. But even if they win, it will be cold comfort. Their mother is changed forever and couldn't bring herself to speak to me about the loss of her youngest son. I'm feeling tense right now, nervous. Um, I haven't been up here since the death of my little brother. Just before he died, realizing he was gravely ill, Robert Allen Webb asked to be buried in this austere cemetery because he didn't want to be a burden to his family. For Sidney, this generosity makes his brother's death even more difficult. That, and the fact that Allen was up for parole in only eight months. But instead, he died early, at the age of 51. These prisoners that has passed away in the Texas prison system, they're still children of God. I was expecting them to get out of prison and take them to that, that fishing trip. He knew he was going to make it to that fishing trip, but I didn't know. I want everybody to know he was a good brother. That's not right. 